Canolinib is a novel FLT3 inhibitor, which is in development for treatment of acute myeloid leukemia patients whose disease harbors a specific FLT3 gene mutation. Now, about 25 to 33 percent of AML patients at diagnosis will have this specific gene mutation, which results in activation of a specific protein on their cells called FLT3. Now, this FLT3 protein promotes the growth of these cells and may also make these cells resistant to standard chemotherapy. And we know from prior data that patients whose disease harbors this FLT3 mutation, this very bad player, will have very poor outcomes to standard chemotherapy. At last year's ASH meeting, there was an abstract presented in the plenary session which demonstrated that the addition of a FLT3 inhibitor mitostorin to standard chemotherapy could improve overall survival for patients with FLT3 mutant AML. However, the overall survival benefit was only about 7 to 8 percent, and about 50 percent of patients would relapse within a year. So we're still looking for that magic bullet. I think we have some FLT3 inhibitors that are useful. This particular FLT3 inhibitor inhibitor is a unique molecule which is very, very potent and specific for FLT3 in contrast to the mitostorin. Uh, it also inhibits mostly FLT3 and maybe one or two other receptors, uh, meaning that it doesn't hit a lot of other targets that may contribute to low counts in these patients. I noticed some of the response rates were pretty significant. Yes, the addition of crinolinib to standard chemotherapy in about 38 patients was very well tolerated. Uh, we had uh, only three, uh, four patients that really had issues in the older age category that had to reduce the drug. Uh, and we had a very uh, a encouraging results. We had an overall response rate of 88%, with 81% of patients achieving a complete remission or a complete remission with incomplete count recovery after just one cycle of standard chemotherapy plus the crinolinib drug. Are those kind of responses durable? Uh, we're not sure. The median follow-up on the study is only six months, but we are very encouraged. And these response rates compare very favorably with the response rates that we've seen in other trials, particularly the mitostorin trial, at the same time point. There's only about 38 evaluable patients, so we'll have to wait and see. But again, we're very encouraged by these results. And with that kind of response, you'd expect there to be at least some kind of toxicity. Well, there are some toxicities that we recorded in the first uh, 30 days of induction chemotherapy. There were some common side effects, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, but it's hard to distinguish whether those specific uh, toxicities were different than we would get with standard chemotherapy alone. Uh, we did see some liver abnormalities, but nothing major, I would say. And as I said, the majority, 84% uh, of patients were able to get through the first cycle of chemo without even dose reducing the drug. Okay. And are there any plans for expanding beyond these 38 patients? Yes, these, uh, this study is not complete. We still have a number of patients that we're accruing onto one of the cohorts to look at uh, different chemotherapy combinations. However, we are so uh, encouraged by these uh, robust results and the very high response rate that we're currently in the process of designing a multi-center pivotal uh, phase three study where patients with this particular kind of FLT3 mutant AML could be randomized to either receive the standard chemo plus the mitostorin from last year's abstract versus our combination of the crinolinib and, and chemo. So, so stay tuned. Maybe we'll, we'll be enrolling hopefully uh, later this year and we, and we look forward to those results.